we're going to see what happens to our Australopes fur distribution. If you're logged into Amplify, go ahead to 1.4 tab 2 and launch the natural selection sim. We're going to see what happens when we change the temperature. So you can see we're starting at mild. And if we move the temperature to cold, you can see how everything turns a little bit more blue, like it's cold and icy and snowy. If we move it to hot, you can see those red heat waves showing that it's roasting hot. We're going to try with fur and temperature A, and we're going to see what happens to our Australopes. So I load fur and temperature A mode. You can see the starting temperature for our Australopes is warm, right? It's in between mild and hot. We're going to see what happens when we change their temperature to cold. So a change in the environment, what happens to them? So I go ahead and I'm going to zoom in and look at some of my Australopes so I can see variation in the amount of fur that they have. So this one has fur level one. Right now it's looking for food. Here we've got fur level seven, fur level four. So you can see the difference, right? This variation in how much fur they have. Okay. So we're going to follow around some of these Australopes and see what happens over time. Okay, so here's our Australope for level one. Oh, it's shivering. It's cold. Let's see if we can find a mate. There we go. Has a baby. Oh, and it died of starvation. It was too cold to go on. All right, so we're going to follow around another Australope, see what happens. Okay, so it looks like I can see a lot of Australopes shivering in the background here. I'm going to speed it up, see what happens. If I click on the little histogram down here, I can see what's happening to the amount of fur. So our Australope population. So we've got about 90 Australopes. We can see, right, we started with all this different amount of fur, all this variation, and we can see how it changes over time. Okay, we're going to watch until we get to generation 50, so we can follow around some of these Australopes. I see so many Australopes shivering. Poor little Australopes. So you notice, right, our Australopes, they're getting their energy by eating the thorn palms, they're reproducing, and then some of our Australopes spend a lot of time shivering. All right, we made it to generation 50. So now I'm going to click on Analyze and look at what happened to our population. So you can see our starting population is represented by these bars in our histogram with stripes and the ending population you can see is this blue color. So you can see we started our starting population we had variations one through seven and our ending population we had most of our Australopes had level seven fur, many of them had level four and some of them had level five. Take a moment and record your thinking so you could write this down or share with your partner. Why do you think the distribution of fur traits changed over time? Which trait became more common over time? And why do you think this happened? You'll notice a lot of this histogram is similar to our warm-up histogram. At generation one, we had variation all the way from one to seven, but by generation 50, we only had four and higher. You'll notice it's not exactly the same because we don't have any fur level six. Again, having these traits means that it's more likely to survive, but not a guarantee of survival. This leads us to the second key concept of natural selection. Go ahead and record this wherever you're keeping track of your key concepts. The number of individuals with each trait in a population can change over time. This leads us to three more important words for this unit. The first one is environment. Environment is everything living and non-living that surrounds an organism. So when we're looking at these different pictures, right, each of these places, there are living things, there are plants, there are animals, and there are non-living things like air and rocks and water. And that together makes the environment where these different organisms live. We saw that when the environment got cold, the Australopes that had more fur were more likely to survive. Scientists call that an adaptive trait. An adaptive trait is a trait that makes it more likely that an individual will survive in a specific environment. 
A non-adaptive trait is the opposite. A non-adaptive trait is a trait that makes it less likely that an individual will survive in a specific environment. So in the case of our Australopes, having less fur was non-adaptive and they were less likely to survive.